that's more than any I've seen. Um, <laughs> and I'm nervous for way too many slides, so I'm either going to talk really fast or go in time or both. Apologies for that. Uh, I'm going to say a bit about who I am, what Elasticsearch is, why you should use it and why I use it, uh, how to install and configure it, how it works in the cluster, you'll find out that it works in the cluster, uh, how to get the documents in and out, various search features available, and then the plans that I have for my Elasticsearch.pm module, which talks to Elasticsearch. So, I'm Clinton Gormley, Dr. Tech on CPAN, uh, I wrote Elasticsearch.pm, I'm the, uh, the CTO of a company called I Announce, they, uh, okay, so that doesn't fit here, so. <laughs> On the right hand side there, uh, it's, we, we run family announcements websites for newspapers. Uh, so, birth, death, marriage notices. If you buy one of these, like a printed of a newspaper, certainly in the UK and in various <coughs> countries around Europe, uh, it'll be pro probably be appearing on one of our websites. We do lots of full text search, and you, you can imagine searching for John Smith across several million notices, or, or in Wales, but they're all got the same name. <laughs> and, no, really. <laughs> uh, and we were using MySQL full text search, which worked fine initially, but uh, it got to a point where it just couldn't keep up. You know, so you'd update one report. Uh, but it was busy doing a search for John Smith, which could take 15 seconds. Everything locks up, just wasn't happening. Uh, and about two weeks ago, we doubled the size of our database, uh, making us the biggest family announcements archive in the world. And if there was no way we were doing it on our current technology, we had to find a full text search solution. I had a look for, well, I looked at Blue Scene, Solar, Sphinx, and just as I was about to start, this new project called Elasticsearch was launched, which looked really neat, and so I investigated it. It's a full text search engine. It's written in Java and based on Blue Scene. So, Blue Scene is a sort of best of breed open source search engine. Uh, works really well, and it's somewhat intimidating to those of us who don't know very much about full text search. Uh, it's open source as well. It's written by a guy called Shai Bannon, uh, who is the technical director of uh, Giga Spaces. That's the Java, in the Java world, it's the cluster sort of distributed hosting, so Java virtual servers on a, on a massive scale. This is the guy who knows about scale. He's also the author of Compass, which are a Java library, so most of us probably, well, I'd certainly never heard of them, but they're widely used in the Java world, and they were used to make it easy to use Lucene in your Java classes. It's used by using search. My module is basically a thin interface that talks to Elasticsearch. It doesn't do anything terribly clever. It connects to a cluster. You can give it a list of servers that you want to connect to. Connect to that. It downloads the active list of nodes, whatever they may be. And then randomly selects one of those. And we'll keep talking to that node until it either the connection drops or uh, you fork a new process, in which case it, it will reconnect. And that's pretty much it. So I think my experience of Elasticsearch of using it is that at first he's trying to make things easy and then make them powerful. So uh, from, starting from the beginning, it's, it's really easy to use, but it exposes a huge amount of power through no more than an ordinary Perl data structure, you know, sort of hash reds, Arrow reds, things we're all familiar with. It's really easy to install and configure. It gives you high availability. Uh, the, it will scale from one node to hundreds. And we'll talk to your domain model. You'll recognize the data structures. It's nothing unusual that you need to get used to. And it gives you all the power and flexibility of Lucy. Speak to uh, JSON using REST over HTTP, which makes it really easy to debug. And it is cloud ready, it works well in the cloud environment. Installing, I'll skip over this, basically download and unzip. <coughs> There's a service wrapper which allows you to control it easily, much the same thing, and install my module yeah, one line. The configuration file arrives empty, uh, and there are probably three things that you want to put in. So the first thing is the cluster name, so that your cluster doesn't end up talking to other people's clusters. 
The second thing is it tries to guess the correct IP address, but if you have more than one on your machine, it may guess the wrong one, specify it, say it's hassle. And the third thing is the gateway. So each server that's running has its own transient workspace, and once that's shut down, you can just delete it, it, it nothing there is needed. But in order to store your data long term, it uses a right behind system where it writes to this gateway. Um, all of the servers need access to this, so a shared directory like NFS or in the cloud they're using S3 to do this, or Hadoop. Uh, it, uh, well, yes, that. Um, the, there's no locking required, it is asynchronous, you can back up this directory at any time, it will be consistent, uh, which makes it easy, you don't need to take the cluster down or put it into a locked state in order to make backups. Starting it, easy, nothing more complicated. You can talk to another command line using curl, because it's just HTTP requests, simple HTTP requests. So if we ask, ask it for the cluster state, uh, note that the default port is 9200. You'll get a response like this. There's nothing terribly interesting here because we haven't added anything yet. Doing it in Perl. Load my module, uh, create a new instance, and you can specify one server or a list of servers and it'll just be trying to apply to one that responds. Uh, you can set trace calls to one or to a log file, and if it's one, everything that you that it, it says to the server and receives from the server gets printed to standard error, which makes it easy to see what's going on. And call cluster state, and you get the same response. All right. Let's create an index. Pretty obvious. So index yapsy, and there it's using the default settings for an index. You can specify the number of shards and the number of replicas that you want to create for an index, and each index can have separate settings. So what are these? A node is the term used for an instance of Elasticsearch, the running server. You have a master node, well, all your nodes are data nodes or non-data nodes. By default, it would be a data node, and out of them, they would elect a single master node. Uh, if that master node were to die, it would, it would elect another one would take over. You can also run non-data nodes, where, which know how to communicate with the rest of the cluster, uh, but don't hold any data themselves. An index is the equivalent of a namespace or database. And each of these has its own settings, and the data stored in the index can be divided up into shards. So the more data you have, probably the more shards you want, and that gets distributed over more machines. Each shard is a Lucene instance, so it takes up a certain amount of memory and so on. So the right value for the number of shards you want depends on your data. It's an experimental thing. You, let's say you have, you have three shards. Then you would have three primary shards. That primary shard is responsible for Accepting the new a new data that's a new document that's being indexed and sending it out, out to the replicas, writing it to the gateway, etc. Uh, you can have zero or more replicas. You, you probably want at least one. And a shard is assigned to a particular node that can be re uh, relocated. When you start a node up, it uses multicast unicast to discover the other servers in the node. I mean, in the cluster. The master is elected. Uh, it also balances, in other words, it moves the shards around so that uh, it's making best use of resources. And it's load balanced, which means that you, it, you can talk to any node and it can forward it on to the rest. So we start the first node, you've got three primary shards there. Second node, it adds the replicas. So you can specify more replicas than you have machines for and then sell the machine later. Start a third node and it rebalances them. <coughs> when you store data to the cluster, we, here we're indexing your document which decides to send to shard 3. But we're talking to node 1, sends it to the primary, which sends it to the replica asynchronously, and uh, that, that's now in there. When you search it, it uses map reviews or scattergather. So 
from the nerd you're talking to, it goes to, it doesn't have to be the primaries, but as I don't get here, but to it, what each shard, they return the data, it gets joined up and returned to the client. Uh, the more primary shards you've got, the more data you can cope with, so the more scalability. And the more replicas, the higher availability you've got, and the faster your searches are. Really helps you more scalability. So each document that you index belongs to an index, has a type, has a unique ID, which, if not present, is all generated and returned to you, and has the data that you're wanting to index. Here's an example. I've got the index type and ID there, and my data fields. Note that here, for instance, I've got three values for tags, and under speaker, I've got an S hash ref. Elasticsearch understands this. You can uh, talk to these fields individually. It, it handles complex data structure as well. And uh, there's no need to commit your data. It gets sent to the replicas automatically, and it's near real time. So every second, it flushes the indexes, load, and that data is available for search. Uh, the Lucy and guys are working at making this real time. You can retrieve the document using the index type and ID, and you get back all of the same data that you gave it. So this could be used as a, new, as a sort of NoSQL store as well. Uh, the developer says, don't at the moment, because it's still in beta, we rather have a separate copy of the data, but that's uh, the intention. Here's a simple search. I specified the index type. And then I'm saying search on the all field, which I'll talk about a bit later, for the, uh, the word magic. It returns, again, the original source of the, the object so that you have it immediately available if you want to use that. That can be disabled, by the way, but it's on by default. Uh, it tells you which index and type it comes from and the total number of hits. If you leave out the index and type, you, you can search across one many or all types and one many or all indices. So, for instance, if you had your indices as YAPSI 2010, YAPSI 2009, you could quite easily do a search across all of those without any problem. One of the biggest sources of confusion when people are starting is the difference between text and terms. All right? So all text gets analyzed. Lowercase, split up on punctuation, remove stop words, which are English by default and obviously configurable, and the result is a list of terms. A term is this indivisible thing. The term is what is indexed in Elasticsearch, all right? And you, it's, the way this is broken up is customizable, but you should use the same analyzer both at index time and at search time, otherwise you're probably looking for something that you haven't stored. Uh, various customizations would include, for instance, stemming, uh, the, the various language plugins, etc. It tries, Elasticsearch tries to make it easy and make it powerful, which means, for instance, it tries to guess each field type that you passed in, which generally is pretty easy. But we're working with the dynamic language, and this would be perfectly understandable to us, but Elasticsearch uh, Elastic written in Java would get it wrong. Uh, another example is our tags. If we had magic and black magic, we don't want the second one to result in the two terms black and magic. If black magic is a single term already, we don't want it analyzed. And that, for that, we use mapping, which is like specifying a schema. You can say, what data type is a field? <laughs> How is it analyzed? If it is analyzed, should it be stored? Should its value be boosted? In other words, is it more, the title field may be more important than the description field. You can specify 